Hello and welcome to a new video. In this part of my engine rebuild, I'm going to show you how to measure up your piston rings and how to file them down so that they match your needed specification. And also I'm going to install them on my pistons so that we can in the next step put the pistons on the rods and put in the bearings. First of all, there are three types of piston rings on every piston. First, we have the first firing ring or the first compression ring, then the second compression ring, which is one below, obviously, and then we have the oil scrapers together with the spring. It is important to set your installed piston ring gap correctly. Why is that? Well, you don't want the piston ring ends touching under load, for example. Uh, that would cause, for example, either scratches in the cylinder bore and obviously mm, this is not good if they touch and act excess pressure on the cylinder wall. Uh, in a worst case scenario, this could actually rip off the top of the piston and cause catas catastrophic engine failure. You also don't want it too big because too big of a piston ring gap causes excess crankcase pressure as the pressure from the combustion can pass through the rings. So how do you measure it exactly? So how do you measure the piston ring gap? Well, you first of all put the piston rings in the piston bore that is already machined. So any machine work should have been done before. Then you put it in the piston rings and push them down to an equal height. Um, I like to use an old piston to do that or generally uh, you could also use a new piston to push it down straight. And then I use a feeler gauge to measure the piston ring gap. Most rings are gapped if you buy them, for example, in the right measurement. So if you have an 81 mil bore, they are gapped to the factory specifications uh, of that 81 mil bore for that car. But the issue is that uh, sometimes they actually aren't. So even if you think they are, I would still try to check the piston rings if they are measure, uh, measuring in at the correct spec. Because I am going to modify my engine in a way that it is going from an NA engine to a turbo engine, I want to slightly widen that gap and uh, therefore I'm going to use a piston ring file, which I bought to get the edges of the piston ring as square as possible. Because if you file one of them maybe straight, but the other one isn't, then obviously you have a larger gap on the one side and a smaller gap on the other side of the piston ring. While yes, may not be much, it's still something to consider and that's why I like to do that this way. Yes, you could also do that with an angle grinder, might, might be cheaper, but you have to be careful to get that whole thing straight. Now going about measuring it. I put it in the bore and I measured about 0.4 millimeters on the first ring and 0.3 millimeters on the second ring. This would be within factory spec. So for the 4AGE 20 valve silver top and also black top. And that's similar to many other NA engines. Because I want, a, uh, want to convert this engine to turbocharged, I want to have a bit of a larger gap. I'm going to widen that gap to 0.5 and 0.4 millimeters. The reason why the lower gap is a bit smaller than the top one is because the lower piston ring is going to see a bit less heat. The oil scraper rings, they are also already pre-gapped, you can check them, but uh, here it is not as important as they are much lower and they even experience even less heat. So it's not as important for those uh, to be uh, gapped in a specific way. So I am going to take uh, off about 0.1 millimeters with my piston ring file to get them to the measurement I am desiring. So again, 0.5 and 0.4 millimeters. The tolerance actually on the 4AGE pistons is 0.3 to 0.7 and 0.4 to 0.8 millimeters. So I am still very much within spec and I'm not going to have excess blow by or I am not going to have uh, any loss in compression, although I have a larger gap. 
If you, for example, would use a track car that is experiencing even higher exhaust gas temperatures or combustion temperatures and uh, longer loads, then you might want to widen up that gap even more. Before you are putting the rings on the pistons, make sure there are no sharp edges or sticking out corners. That's why I like to sand them down with a uh, piece of sandpaper, but please make sure to only chamfer the edges so that they do not leave any scratches, for example, in the cylinder walls, uh, which would be kind of bad for the engine in general. And also, don't scratch the surface of the piston rings where they contact the cylinder walls, otherwise they won't seal correctly. Going for installing those piston rings, it's pretty easy. Uh, I don't like to use a piston ring installer because it's pretty easy with those to snap the rings. Um, so I like to use my fingers, it may hurt a bit or maybe a bit uncomfortable, but it works the best in my opinion. First of all, I put on the oil scraper spring, which butts up on the ends so that it is basically sitting flush to the flush with the ends. On that go the bottom and the top oil scraper ring. You have to put on those after the spring because otherwise they won't fit because they sit kind of on the spring and compress the spring down. And after that you just put on the both of the compression rings. So be careful though, some of these compression rings, depending on the manufacturer, they have a top and a bottom side. This depends on the manufacturer and if they are a square ring or not. Some have a chamfered edge which can go on the bottom or top, so look that up in the instructions that you have gotten with your rings. Otherwise, I just put them in like you see in the video. I I bend them outwards as least I possibly can so that I don't accidentally snap one. Um, you may snap the <laughs> snap one or two uh, uh, if you are doing this the first time maybe, so don't worry. Um, it happened to me also uh, once or twice in the past or in my first few engines, but nowadays I can manage pretty well. And the second compression ring is probably the hardest to install because in this case it's the thickest also. But I'm just going to put it in the groove on one side and then just turn it around the piston to get it into the groove. And uh, yeah, all of, overall it's pretty easy and not that difficult. At the end you just make sure that the rings are free so that there is no binding or anything which would be an issue. And uh, then we are ready to basically install the con rods into the piston and install everything into the engine. Once we are at that point, I will show you some other details you have to watch out for.